Good morning, victory today is mine. Brooke, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Brooklyn Choir, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, singing in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, and whatever we are fighting, whatever the enemy has been holding us, holding us back in whatever situation, today we have the victory. We have the victory over unforgiveness. We have the victory over bitterness. We have the victory over fear. Hallelujah. Sing with me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We have the victory. I have the victory. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Satan has to flee when we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. When we call in his name, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name hallelujah thank you jesus 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 precious jesus we have the to hallelujah yes tell me who can stand yes sing my sister stand before us when we call in that great name and that name is jesus oh yes jesus 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 he's the precious precious jesus call in the name we have hallelujah we have the victory yes tell me who can stand before us? Mm. <laughs> no one can stand before us when we call on that great name. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus. We've got the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you today, God. Thank you, Father, for the victory. We have victory in Jesus. We thank you, Father, that we have victory over sin. We have victory because you went to Calvary and you died. You have made it possible that we can live a victorious life. And so today, Father, I come against all the lies that the enemy has told your children that they should continue to walk in unforgiveness because of what someone may have done to them and father because of that they are losing out on your blessing they've listened to the lie and they're not walking in fullness they're not walking in complete health they're not walking in all that you have for them so today i, I thank you father for the power that you have released to your children and i thank you that their eyes would be open knowing you have a better life for them and in the name of jesus they walk in victory victory over unforgiveness victory over hatred victory over defeat victory over bitterness victory over sickness father we thank you father for breaking every stronghold in the lives of your children the spirit of unforgiveness we speak to you today be broken in the name of jesus and we call god's people free in Jesus name amen 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 good morning everyone God is good good morning thank you for joining us this is the day God has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it we thank God that we walk in his power and in his anointing God is good good morning good afternoon good evening whatever time of the day you're viewing this video we want to say hello to you and welcome welcome I'm God I'm Lois Francois sorry from God's Love Nest Foundation we are a nonprofit organization in Richmond, Virginia, who minister to families in crisis. And so every Wednesday mornings, I minister at 7 a.m. to families, whatever God has in my heart to, to say to them. This week, we'll be 
uh, continuing on forgiveness. We also, I also minister on Sundays at 9 a.m. So last week we started talking about unforgiveness. And you know, I started this series because God uh, said to me, there's so many people who know him, they're his children, and they're going through so many things in their lives. And he said, the reason why they are, they are in those situations, and I said, some many times people do not realize, but unforgiveness could also cause someone to be um, walking in, in, in bad health, not, not walking in a perfect health. And so God says he wants the best for us, because remember his word says, if we don't forgive, others god will not forgive us and so the lord asked me to share about unforgiveness and sometimes people do not really know um the, the significance of walking in unforgiveness they do not know um that, that god has a better life for them because they've been hurt so many times and they find it impossible to forgive but at the time when we walk in that unforgiveness that all the individual who we have not forgiven they are moving on with their lives Meanwhile, we are suffering. So I'm going to briefly touch on what I shared last week, and then I will move on in today, what the Lord has for us today. So briefly, I want to again go through what the word forgiveness, unforgiveness means. So forgiveness, first of all, the word forgiveness is a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or a group who has harmed you regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. Forgiveness does not mean <clears throat> condoning the offenses, condoning what that person did. Why should we forgive the Bible? What does the Bible say about forgiveness? It says here, if we do not forgive others, God will not. And I quoted the, the Bible verse last week that's found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, 14, and 15. And many times we say that, forgive us, Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we say, Lord, do this as we do this. So we tell him, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so if we want God to forgive us, we have to be the one that's walking in forgiveness, forgiving others who has trespassed against us. So this week, and last week I also shared how to forgive someone who has hurt me. There were two steps I shared. The first step, do not go to bed angry. Ephesians 4, 26 says, the angry, the angry, no, be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. And number two, learn to let go and let God. James says, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and evil flee. So you let go of that hurt and that bitterness and God will, 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 will help you. All right, going on to this week, part two of forgiveness. <clears throat> Why should we forgive? Because God says so. God says we need to forgive. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father, which is God, your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses or your sins. Again, Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses and sometimes because some individuals have been walking in unforgiveness for a while they may forget that there is someone in their life that they haven't forgiven and so i make it a rule of myself i you know every day i try to do it every day if not if i forget i try to do the not the other day and i said lord show me i come to god i said lord search me oh god know my heart today try me oh savior know my thoughts See if there be some wicked way in me, Lord. Show me if there's someone that I've not forgiven, someone that I'm angry at, someone that I, I have an attitude, I'm bitter at somebody. Show me, God. And many times when I pray that prayer, maybe I may have forgotten, but God is saying, you know, there's something there. You hear this person's name and you, you're acting in a certain way. And so that helps me to make it right with God. And so I would encourage you, yes, it may be hard, but with God, it is possible why should we forgive because god says if we want to be forgiven we should also be forgive others <clears throat> forgiveness is our own growth is for 
our own growth in happiness. Let's say that forgiveness is from my own growth in happiness, as I said. Someone would be continuing with the life. And sometimes, the other thing that I've learned, sometimes people do not even know that they have wronged us. They didn't know that we were offended. So many times, it's good to say <clears throat> to that individual, you know what you said, you know, really offended me. You know, you were wrong. You didn't get the truth. Whatever it is, tell that individual. And sometimes people will say, well, she should know because that's not the person I am. So many times, especially in families, and in the body of Christ, the enemy brings about um, confusion and strife because he doesn't want us to grow in love with each other. He wants us to fall out from a fellowship with God. And so he would, someone may say, A, I always say, and then you hear Z, they may say something and you hear something completely different or you may hear it in a different way. And that's where that spirit of confusion comes in. So many times it's always good to say, this is what I'm hearing. This is what I felt. And this is what someone said you said about me. You know, growing up, you always say they're talking with he say and she say. And so it's not good. Someone say, oh, she said that. Did you hear what she said? Do not take it and run with it. Because that person may have misunderstood. And then there are times when there are some strife makers who may make up things. And so it's always good to approach that individual. This is what I heard. Is this true? Is this, is this what you meant? And so let's get it, you know, just speak to that individual. The Bible also said if someone offends us, we should go to that one, confront them and speak to them in a spirit of meekness, in a spirit of love, in a spirit of gentleness, in a spirit of peace. So forgiveness is our own growth, is for our own growth and happiness. When we hold on to hurt and pain, resentment and anger, it harms us far more than it harms the offender. When we forgive, it gives us peace of mind. When we forgive, it gives us peace of mind. I'm telling you, unforgiveness, it's, it's a bad thing. It, it's really terrible. And if some people may not even realize how bad it is until they forgive that person and they realize like, ooh, a weight, like a weight has, has, has you know, just like, like a weight has just left me. And that's the way I felt when I was walking in, in unforgiveness. I said, I forgive that individual. And I didn't. Every time I heard their name, every time I saw them, there was this anger. And so God is saying, I am here to help you. I want the best for you. And some of you, you've been in it for such a long time. You may not realize how much life there is out of when you walk in forgiveness. You don't realize the freedom that you have when you walk in forgiveness. So again, it's for our own growth and happiness. When we hold on to hurt, pain, resentment, and anger, it harms us more than it harms the offender. Forgiveness, let us regain our personal power somebody say that forgiveness helps me to regain my personal power our anger regret hatred or resentment towards someone means that we are giving up our power to that person yeah that person is controlling your life your anger to that person your resentment you're letting what that person did to you control the way you act and so that's not that, that that's not healthy we should be able to say, God, my life is controlled by you. So again, forgiveness helps us to reg regain our personal power. We need to forgive to ensure that anger, again, bitterment, bitter, sorry, bitterness, resentment, or revenge do not take up residence within us. You know, you look at some people, and regardless of what's going on, they, they look so tense. Their face is always so angry. And you're like, my, you could just look on their face. I'm like, my goodness, what is going on in his and her life? And sometimes when you go, if you sit with them and you talk with them, you realize there's unforgiveness. Somebody has hurt them, maybe a spouse or some loved one. And it's there because it was such a deep hurt. And they're going through life. Some of them, be, I mean, they're they're beautiful, but because of the the sadness on their face, I mean, they, they begin to have wrinkles at an early age. And 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 you know, God may, especially if it may be someone who is believing for a spouse, and because of the way they carry their, because of their facial expressions, they could. I mean, turn away the person that God has for them. Why is he always so bitter? Or why is she always so bitter? Any little thing, they're always on edge. And so here again, it's, it holds us back. It holds us back. 
Again, it says, we need to forgive to ensure that anger, resentment, bitterness, or revenge do not take up residence within us. Residence meaning it becomes a part of you. Like you, 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 you know, many times you go places and you have to fill out an application or whatever it is, and they ask where your place of residence, that's where you reside, you've lived there. So just imagine if you're living in a house with, with something that, that, um, Let's say if you're living in a house with bats, bats take up the residence in your house, they're there. That would not, you, you would not be able to live comfortable. You would not be able to live healthy because this thing is getting into your space. And so, or let's say rats is in the house or termites in the house. They're eating away that house, eating away. And eventually what would happen? Termites, we know that's something you don't want to, you don't want in your home. And that's it eats away. It's, it's so tiny. You can't see it. And it may be the different corners of your house and eat. And suddenly, if you do not know that termites are there and you do not take care of it, you would lose your home. Eventually it would start falling and falling apart. Likewise, when there's unforgiveness, resentment, anger, bitterness, revenge, it takes up residence and it's there and it's eaten away, eaten away, eaten away. Then all of a sudden you find that you start having um, stomach pain, chest pains, and then you start having headaches because you see it affects your body. It eats away, it has taken up residence there because it's been there for a while. You haven't taken care of it, but it's hidden. Nobody knows. You see, nobody knows. Like the termites, you don't know it's there. It's hidden in the house. But God knows. And so today God is saying, my daughter, my son, I see what those termites are doing in your house, in your house, your body. I'm just, I'm just relating it to termites. I can see and I want to help you before your house goes to pieces, before your health goes in shambles. God is saying, do not give it residence. Do not let it reside in you. It says here. Eventually, when these things reside in us, unforgiveness, which is, leads to anger, resentment, bitterness, and revenge, when they reside in us, eventually leads to physical and emotional diseases. We forgive, not for primarily for the benefit of others, but for ourselves to prevent further or more serious disorders. And there are so many medical um, um there's so many things that happens to our body when there's unforgiveness. Somebody asked the question, does unforgiveness affect your mental health? One of the common but mistaken beliefs is that forgiveness means letting that person off the hook. Research has shown that forgiveness is linked to mental health. It's linked to mental health. So it links the mental health, sorry, outcomes such as reduced anxiety, depression, and major psychiatric disorders. So you see somebody's going through certain things and, and sometimes they go to the doctor and the doctor said there is no medical, there's no reason why. You know, we see there's no medical, based on the, the, the test, there's nothing that's medically wrong with you. Unforgiveness could be one of the reasons why. It says here, Anxiety, depression, then it starts starts affecting you psychologically. So this is a serious thing. We do not want to do that. We do not want to, to mess with our, our bodies to be, you know, as I said, the termites in that house, if it's not taken care of, you will lose your home and you don't want to use, lose your health. Meanwhile, someone is going on with their life. Somebody may have left you for someone else or whatever it is it may have happened. Somebody may have stolen you, whatever. They're moving on with their life, having fun, and your health is, is deteriorating. God is saying, my daughter, my son, I want to help you. The question, what does bitterness do to your body? What does bitterness do to your body? The research shows that bitterness makes you sick. Bitterness makes you sick. Can you imagine someone always, always angry? I was angry. You know, it says laughter is a medicine. Laughter, you know, when you laugh, I mean, you, you know, when you laugh, you feel so good. You get a good laugh. I'm like, oh, that was a good laugh for the day. So the opposite of bitterness is, 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 I would say, laughter or happiness or joy. And you of yourself could sit and analyze. When I am bitter, how do I feel? My body's all tense. As soon as anything, I hear a little noise, I shake, I, I, you know, I'm nervous. Analyze it. When I am bitter, how do I feel in my body? And when I'm happy, when I'm laughing, when there's joy. And you may say, it is so hard. But God is saying, 
I specialize in impossible, my daughter, my son. Yes, it may be hard. That's why I'm bringing the word to you today. I want to help you, God is saying. I want to set you free. Like you may have termites in your house. You will go to a company that specializes in that. They will come and get rid of those termites and they will take care of your house and then you could live well again. God is saying, I'm that person, like the torment, the person in that company would take care. I want to come and take care of what's in your body, the bitterness, the hatred, the anger, the resentment. Persistent bitterness may result, re, sorry, may result in global feelings of anger and hostility that when strong enough, when this thing is strong enough, so the longer it's there, it it, grab, it, 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 it it gets worse. The longer it's there, remember, it takes residence. It's like um, it's like one of those, I remember while I was in school, going to school, and we would walk home, there was a certain tree. I can't remember that tree, but if you pass by it, it would cling on to your body, it would hold on, and you have to really forcefully pull it, you know, to get it off your body. And so that's what it does. After a while, it becomes, it just clings on to you. Can you imagine on the inside there and starts affecting your chest? Uh, you, you have ulcerated stomach, you can't breathe well, and all these stuff going on. So it says persistent bitterness, feelings of anger and hostility that, when strong enough, could affect a person's physical health. And this is, this is, um, one of the um, researches that was done in August of 10, 2011. So why do we forgive? First of all, because God says, and because it's for our own good. We want to live. The Bible said, I want you to be in perfect health. I want to be loved. I wish above all things that you would be in good health, even as your soul prospers, even as your souls prosper. So how do we, how do we come to the place where God can help us? We ask God, we seek his face, we seek his help. And so today, the two things that I want is how do I forgive someone who has hurt me part two? Number one, I will take some time, some me time. I will take some me time or time to search myself. And I would come before God and say, God, show me. Did I do anything to contribute to the hurt I'm feeling, to the pain? Or did I do anything to cause that person to act the way they act? Because sometimes in a rage of anger, frustration, we could say and do things that we do not even realize. And from based upon what we said, may have said, or based upon a reaction, that person may have reacted and then they hurt us. So it's good to take that time in order for us to forgive, ask yourself, did I contribute to what has happened to you? Did I contribute to that person hurting me or saying what they said? And let us be honest, come before God, say, God, show me. And if you did, God is going to show you. So what happens if you find you contributed to that hurt or that pain? We simply say, God, forgive me. And you go to that person and said, you know, you, I, I'm very hurt by what you did to me. And I realized that maybe I could have acted in a different way. Maybe I should not have said that. And you get honest to that person. You be honest with them and said, I'm sorry. And if that person is still mad at you, that's okay. But you have to also search yourself because sometimes it's not only the person's fault. Both individuals are at fault. So how do I forgive someone? We look at ourselves. We don't get a, we don't look at a pity party. We said, God, show me. Have I wronged this person in some way? Did I contribute to what has happened? And if we did, we ask God forgiveness. And first John. 1 9 says if we if we confess our sins he which is god is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness before we must admit our own mistakes in order to be forgiven so we admit our mistakes ask god to forgive us we tell the person i say you become a man or a woman you man up yourself you know i was wrong I should not have done that. I, I, I pushed you to the point where, you know, and forgive me. Another thing that we do, we say to the Lord, Psalm 139, 23 to 24, search me, O God, know my heart today. See if there be, sometimes people would be very pro 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 provoke others by the things they say. They may tease them, taunt them. And, and this, this happens a lot in, in schools and I mean even in the workplace and it leads to bullying and it leads to hurting. So let's be very careful with our words and what we do. A second way, how, what, how do I forgive someone who has hurt me? Another thing we could do, we build up our spirit man. I build up my spirit man. How? By talking to God. 
we pray. Talking to God means praying, reading the word, and meditating. After we read the word, as we go through our day, we think, we choose a verse to think on that word. Like God says, um, let the fruit of the Spirit dwell in you. What does that mean? What does the fruit of the Spirit mean? And so, first of all, we build our spirit man by talking to God, reading and meditating on his word, allowing his spirit to flow through us. Say, Lord, I, I want you to flow through me so I can become a carrier of your peace, your love, your joy, and forgiveness. We come to God. One of the ways in which we could forgive someone who has hurt us, we say, God, I need your strength. I need your strength to do this. We talked to him and said, make me, God, a carrier of your peace, your love, your joy, and forgiveness. And the scripture verse that backs this up is Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And so this is what we wanna ask God for. And so I want to pray with us today because some of us, it's very hard to let go. We've been hurt and maybe by one person several times and you're like, I can't do it again. You don't know. Every time I forgive her, every time I forgive him, every time I forgive my family, this, this, this family, I don't know what this family has against me. It's your own family, but it's one family. I don't know what they have against me. They, 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 they envious of me. Why? Every time I, I'm tired of it. I, I'm done. I, 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 that's it. And you write them off. Because you forgive them and they take it as a license to continue treating you anyhow. God is saying, my daughter, I know it's painful, my son, but I'm here to help you today. And so I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And so as I said before, one of the things in order for us to be able to be able to forgive, we come to God and said, God, give me your strength. Give me a desire for your word because sometimes we don't feel like reading the word. We don't. And you know what? That's the trick of the enemy. He doesn't want us to get into the word because the word is going to bring us out of that depression. The word is going to, it's, the Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when we read the Bible, the word of God, it will show us, Lois, you know you did this. Lois, you know you need to correct this. And so the enemy does not want us to walk in the fullness of God. He doesn't want us to walk in obedience because when we walk in obedience, all the blessing of God is ours, but he wants to keep us in bondage and he doesn't, he doesn't show us that all he keeps saying you can't forgive her you can't forgive him oh this this and all this stuff he keeps bringing to your mind but you see when you have the word of God and you daily read the word it will help you to take your mind off of that individual and what they did the hurt and the pain so I'm gonna pray with you that God would give you the strength to get into that word and sometimes you want to read a word and you get tired sometimes you want to read a word i've heard people get headache people get stomach ache that is the enemy so what i'll say to you if you find that's happening you just google on your phone um psalm whatever or whatever bible's verse you want or you could have a habit you could start reading through the bible or reading through the new testament or starting with the book of john and you could just go the book the book of audio reading of the book of john Order your reading of the New Testament. And so you put it on while you're lying on bed or while you're driving with it, and you listen to it and the word. And after a while, you gain the strength to read it. But I know many times you want to read, you fall asleep, you get tired. The enemy brings pain and discomfort on your body, but you have to push. You have to push. It's like those, those, those of us mothers who were pregnant and it's the time of delivery and there is pain. And many of us remember the doctor, the, the, the midwife or the doctor said, come on, the baby's coming, push. And you're like, no. No, and it's painful so you it's gonna be painful but you gotta push because in the midst of the pain as you push what happened that beautiful baby comes and that pain yeah you may have some pain but the pain subsides so that's it you know you gotta push in spite you just gotta say Jesus Jesus because mind you I'm telling you when you call on that name of Jesus it gives you the strength to say Jesus 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 and you listen or you read or you walk back and forth in the house as you read it's gonna give you the strength that you need so I'm gonna lead you in a word of prayer today if you don't mind repeating Father God thank you for loving me Thank you for reminding me that you have the best for me, God, and you want the best for my life. Lord, it's been a lot. It's been very hurtful. The things that I've went through in the past, all the things that was done and said to me. But today, God, I want to get rid of all the unforgiveness in my life. God, 
I need your help. Give me your strength to let this person go when you call their name. God, in the name of Jesus, with your power, with your power, I let so-so go. I let Judy go. I let David go. Just call, I let them go. Thank you, God, for your strength. Thank you for your power to live a victorious life. In Jesus' name, amen. Doesn't that make you feel good? And mind you, the enemy's going to still bring things back to your mind. But you just say, you know what? God, I know my father's going to do it. So are we going to go out with my song, Miracle Working God? Some of us need a miracle. And God said, as you come to me and you ask for my help, I am going to work in this impossible situation. I'm going to heal your heart. I'm going to, all the things that has been gripping, as I said, that plant would cling to, to, to you if you get too close to it. All the bitterness and the, the anger and the resentment that was clinging to your body, God said, I, 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 it's over. I got it, baby. I got it, my daughter. I got it, my son. I got it. It's over. It has to lose. It has to leave you in Jesus' name. And right now, I decree and decree every stronghold of bitterness that has been clinging to this young man, this young lady, this woman, this father, this mother, I command you to loose in the name of Jesus. Loose this individual in Jesus' name. God has spoken. He's given us authority over everything on the earth that may be coming against his children. He said, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loose on it is loose in heaven. And I command you to loose this child of God, spirit of unforgiveness, loose and do not return set free set this woman free set this man free in jesus name amen 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 so we're gonna sing miracle working god in jesus name glory to god glory to god oh hallelujah thank you god Thank you, God. God is your word. Oh, You're not alone. Lord, You're not alone. And let us yes. His name Hallelujah. I to the Lord you did that. He heard you. And, and God will deliver you. Freedom God has delivered Jesus. you today. Yes. I want you to join me as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He's a miracle, miracle working, working God. God. Miracle working. Yes. Yes. See all the bitterness. Yes. God said. That's what I did on the cross, my dad, daughter. That's what I did when I went to the cross and I died for your sins. Give it to me. It's not impossible with me. I'm on your side. Oh, glory to God. Every pain that you've experienced, every medical discomfort, every pain in your body has to go. As you forgive that individual, it has to go. It has to go. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, walk in your miracle. Yes. And if you got to pretend a smile, just got to put a fake smile on. Every time you feel that pain, keep putting on that snake file until one day smile. It's going to be a genuine smile. Thank you, Jesus. He's the miracle working God. Miracle working God. Yes. Oh, Jesus, thank you, God, for your healing power. Ooh. Hallelujah, miracle working God. Yes. Nothing is Yes, he's the miracle working God. Mm. Mm. My God. Yes, healed. Mm. In my miracle, I receive my miracle. Hallelujah. Supernatural in my God. I receive a miracle. Thank you, Jesus. See the miracle working God. Yes, he is. Nothing is impossible. He's a miracle working God. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, bring it all to God. He's going to take care of it. God wants the best for you. And you speak to all, all the medical stuff that's coming against you. You call for healing in Jesus' name. My God, my God specializes in the impossible. 
all the load, all the bitterness, the load you've been carrying, the hatred, the unforgiveness, bring it to him. Yes. Nothing is too difficult, Jesus. Nothing is too difficult. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Wonderful working God. Yes, he yes. Wonderful working God. Nothing is difficult for oh my God. Yes, he yes. Wonderful working God. Oh, we worship you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I thank you for the strongholds of unforgiveness is broken today. And we release the spirit of peace. I release the spirit of love. I release the spirit of joy. In Jesus' name, your children walk in your peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So go today, go forth, mighty men and women of God, walking in God's power. You have been forgiven. I've led you in the prayer, and God has forgiven you. Yes, the enemy would bring the minds and things about these people like to you, and you may end up seeing that person today. They may call you today, and then you may feel that's about to rise up. You just say, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Just that word, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, there is deliverance. There is healing. And you walk in your victory. So just confess the name of Jesus and say, God, I thank you that I'm free. I walk in forgiveness. Thank you all. Be blessed. Go forth. Have a wonderful day. See you back on Sunday at 9 a.m. Have a wonderful day. Thanks again for joining. Take care.